There are a lot of things to consider while getting a new Mac. Display size, storage, processor and RAM. And I would argue that the RAM is the most important decision you'll make while configuring it. One, it is non-upgradable in future. But two, there are some quirks about how memory works on M1 and M2 Macs. Choosing that appropriate RAM for your Mac will make or break your experience. Now, obviously, I can't pick a RAM size for you. But in this video, I'll walk you through all the factors that matter the most, which will help you choose the perfect RAM size for your needs. Upgrading memory while configuring a new Mac can be expensive. A 16 GB bump can set you back over $400. So it's easy to just go with the lowest memory model that we think will be our usage. But with M1 and M2 Max, the CPU, the GPU, RAM and everything else is integrated into the chip itself. It's an all-in-one package. This has some great benefits like efficiency and performance gains. But this also obviously means we cannot expand or upgrade our memory in the future. What we get while purchasing is what we will be stuck with for the rest of our lives. But it's not just that. You see, in a traditional processor system, there will be a CPU, there will be an integrated or dedicated GPU and there will be a memory. This memory is dedicated specifically for the apps you run. There is another type of memory called the VRAM or video memory. Usually this will be within the integrated or dedicated GPU which is the memory used for video as it says or in general for displaying content on your display. This is important for video specific applications like gaming, rendering etc. Since M2 Max have a shared RAM or memory, some part of your memory will be used for your display purposes as well. So tip number one, if you have any display intensive applications, multiple monitor setup or gaming needs, reserve a part of your memory for VRAM as well. They will consume a non-trivial amount of memory which you thought were all yours. So keep that in mind. Second, do not estimate your RAM needs based on your current workloads alone. Think at least three to four years into the future how your usage will be and then decide on the memory. Leaving some headroom will definitely save you from upgrading it too soon. For example, I edit my YouTube videos on my Mac using Final Cut Pro. It's a heavy memory intensive application but when I got my Mac, I rendered to 1080p video quality. Now I render in 4K. Suddenly my Mac is throttling and dropping frames. Even if my rest of my Mac is working as it should, I now need to upgrade just because I don't have headroom to expand more. A $200 upgrade would have saved me from another $1500 purchase. Even if you're quite sure that your usage won't change for the next four years, all you use is browser and some office apps, still leaving some room is highly recommended. This is because even if your workloads don't change, the application you're using will increase its demands. Over the next four years of your Mac usage, there will be OS updates, application updates, content updates, all of which will be more memory intensive than the previous version. So even if you don't need the extra RAM, your applications and OS will. Third, just like the storage, even if you buy an 8 or 16 GB memory model, as soon as you turn on your Mac, you will see that the OS simply uses a significant amount of your memory just for running idle, even if you're not running any applications by yourself. And on top of that, there are a bunch of background tasks and applications that just run in the background without you even knowing. So just like the VRAM, the OS and background tasks also take a chip out of the precious 8 or 16 GB RAM leaving you little room for your primary applications. Let's talk about another important trick that your OS does to your Mac to keep it running smoothly. It's called swap memory. Hear me out on this because it has some important repercussions. Let's say you have an 8 GB memory model M2 Mac. Your OS background tasks and VRAM took 4 GB GB memory already. You're left with 4 GB now. If you try photo editing with Photoshop, it might need more than 4 GB memory for itself. What does the Mac do now? When there is memory pressure to give you a smooth experience as much as possible, the Mac will offload some part of your memory onto the SSD on your Mac, some low priority apps and stuff, making room for high priority ones. This memory that your OS is using on the SSD is called swap memory. You can see the swap memory being used using the activity monitor app that's available on your Mac. In installed by default. If you see a significant amount of memory in swap memory field, that means you do not have enough memory for your primary applications. You can see in my case that I'm excessively using swap memory, which means I did not do a good job picking the best configuration. At least I can share my learnings and help you pick the right one. An increase in swap memory is an easy indication that you need more RAM. Wait, the OS can use my SSD in place of memory? 
That's great, right? I have 512 GB of them. Why will I even need to get a 16 GB or more memory? Can I not just go for the lowest configuration and let OS use my SSD in place of RAM? Even though technically it's a yes, you don't want to do that. The swap memory for one is extremely slower than your DRAM. So as soon as your primary application starts using primary memory, you will see slowdown, jitteriness, stuttering, crashes, and all sorts of trouble. Second, all SSDs have a limited write cycle on them, meaning you can only write to an SSD SSD for a certain number of times and beyond which they will go corrupt or lose the effectiveness of strong files properly. Now, if there is an excessive amount of SSD read writes used by your OS as swap memory, on the long run, it's going to damage and reduce the lifespan of your SSDs. With M1 and M2 Max, since the memory is integrated into the processor, the need for swap memory is also larger than before as many articles have noted. So it's best not to use the swap memory as much as possible. Now, don't worry because even conservatively an SSD will last over 8 to 10 years of consistent swap usage. But if you see excessive swap memory with your workflow, then it's a good indication and guidance to show that you need more memory when you upgrade, even if you don't experience any slowdown or jitter. Now, those were some things to look out for before going ahead and configuring your new Mac. But here are my overall recommendations as well. Keep in mind that you will need to tailor fit for your needs and this is just a general recommendation. If the most of your usage of your Mac is going to be browser, watching movies, social media, office apps like Word, PowerPoint, etc. An 8GB Mac should be more than sufficient for you. Mac OS will take care of managing your memory efficiently with swap memory for those occasional high demands. If you have enough money to upgrade and would like to do some future proofing, then you can go for the 16GB model, but it's not mandatory. On the other hand, if you are a creative professional and use your Mac for any sort of content creation like video editing, music production, sound design, photo editing, Photoshop or illustration, rendering, software development, etc. I'd highly recommend going for the 16GB Mac, whatever Mac it may be. For such needs, 16GB won't be an upgrade, but it's an essential. Even if 90% is media consumption and just 10% is content creation, it would still make a ton of difference by going for the 16GB model. If you have some cash to burn, then future proof with 24GB. If you are a full time professional, which involves over 80 to 90% of your time in graphic intensive or memory intensive applications, like Final Cut Pro, 3D rendering, etc., then it's a no brainer to go for at least 24 gigs of memory. I use my Mac primarily for video editing, and 16 GB is not cutting it as you saw before. At this point, you will already be looking at an M2 Pro or M2 Max, which only starts at 16 GB. But I'd recommend then going for 32 GB model to future proof yourself. Okay, that's about it in today's video. Do you agree with my thoughts and recommendations? Let me know in the comments below. And also, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.